كم ار يو ريدي تو انليش؟ يس 100% اولويز 100% 1000% كم اتس ا بليجر هافينج يو توداي ان انليش ويز احمد خالد اي نو ذات وي ار كونكتد ميبي لايك فور ييرز باك يا اون لينكد ان بات توداي I am sure that we will unleash a lot of things and will help a lot of people in in our way. So uh, welcome to Unleash for for today. Thank you so much. I'm super happy to be here and to meet you finally, finally. after four years. <laughs> um, and I'm super excited about the discussion we're going to have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. <laughs> Kim, uh, I think that you have an interesting story, I believe. Um, I know for a fact that you have this marketing experience and brand building experience. And one time you shifted your all of this from marketing and branding into career coaching. What was the reason behind I this know. shift? The funny part, it started 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. I was still uh, I was still out of university uh, in Paris at the time. And I was trying to find uh, internships, not even jobs at the time still. And I realized that I was a bit different from how my friends were doing it. So we had a, an internship that we need to do mandatory as part of the program for one year, full year. And I was very excited about the interview part, <laughs> meaning it was very funny, actually. I wanted to get as many interviews as I could, not to have the opportunities to have <laughs> internships, but because I just loved interviews from the very beginning. I really loved interviews. Like I, I wanted to go and I wanted the challenge of seeing if this person is going to ask me a question, not where do you see yourself in five years time, <laughs> but like questions that I would not expect, that I would mm-hmm. not have prepared for to see how I'm going to think on my own two feet. And if I'm going to be able to, to get them to, to like me and to get them to see that I'm the right person or not. And this is where I thought like, It's interesting, it's different. But in my mind, I thought there is no way I'm going to make money of it. And, and, and it's not different. Because when you have that thing that is unique about you, you don't feel that it's unique because you think that I know how to do it. So it's not something that's special, but you don't realize that other people don't have it and that it's your own thing. So it was obviously 10 years back. I put it at the back of my mind <laughs> long time ago. And then I moved into, into advertising first, actually, and then into marketing. And I realized that I'm someone who has a lot of passion. I need to have passion in what I'm doing. Or if I don't have passion and the passion will die out, I'll not be able to work. You will see it. It's, I don't have a poker face. <laughs> you will see it directly. If you work with me, if anything, it's impossible. And I realized that I changed jobs so many times Every time, even my family, my parents were saying, Kim, you're changing jobs too much. It's not good. It doesn't look good on your resume. You know, and I'm like, I'm getting another job. What's the problem? If I'm getting a job at the end of the day, means I'm able to sell myself. So what's the problem? If I'm searching for something and I don't get something, okay. And then I realized that it's not about changing jobs so many, so many times, but I was stuck in that cycle of... I'm always excited the first few months of joining uh, you know, a company. And some people might relate to what I'm saying because any person that starts a job will be excited about what you're doing. You're joining a new company, hopefully one you like. <laughs> you're joining you know, a new department, you know, new brands for me in marketing, but even from a supply chain perspective, new processes, new teams. It's exciting because it's challenging at the beginning. It's new, it's different. You need to think, you don't know how to do it like, you know, on your own with your eyes closed in terms of things. But then I realized that every time that passion just starts slowly, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like the fire starts being smaller and smaller and then extinguishing more and more. And then I'm like, okay, now what? After six months, I'm like, that's it. And I looked at people and I didn't feel like they were the same. I felt like people were okay. I'm the only one that feel like, you know, after six months, what's going on? And I want more. I need more. And it's that cycle of not feeling like I belong there. Not because I don't get along with the people, but what I'm doing, it's like, okay, is that it? And then what after that, you know? I'm working on a campaign. What happens after? Okay, the other campaign. But then what after that, you know? It becomes the same thing. And then you, you market a different brand, but it's the same thing over and over. And I realized that 
after a few times, also the, the, the fire starts burning faster. It doesn't <laughs> even last longer because mm -hmm. I know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Now I know there is no different expectation. And then I thought for myself, you know, why should people feel this way? Why should people feel like they have to stay in the job because I've only been there for one year, so it doesn't look good on my resume? Why do people feel like I have to do what I'm doing because I studied this or because I have 10 years, 15 years of experience in that field? Okay, but my question to you is not what have you done or what did you do? My question is, is there still a fire under that is lighting you up as much as it's lighting you up before? Or is that slowly dying, but then you still keep going? And I realized that I don't want people to feel the same way I did. Like whether it's young people, whether it's executives, I don't want them to go through work, which is 70%, even more now these days, <laughs> of what we, what we spend on a day-to-day -day doing something that, eh, it, it's going okay, you know? <laughs> For the best, it's going okay. For some, mm -hmm. it's not going okay at all. Just because I don't see anything else or I don't know how to get anything else, or I'm just, you know, stuck in, in a cycle. And this is where I decided to, you know, start thinking about career coaching because coaching was something that was becoming more popular at the time. And I started thinking about career coaching because I'm not into life coaching or anything like that. But I really like the career aspect of it. And I felt like, you know, the parts of marketing that I like, I'm finding it in career coaching because at the end of the day, I'm, smell I'm selling my products. I'm selling myself. So I am marketing in a different mm -hmm. way, you know, but it's myself. It's my products, my things. And these are the aspects that I'm excited about in terms of marketing that I also find a way to put it in my own business in terms of things. And this is how I started career coaching. So it's been, what, three years now? <laughs> <laughs> what a shift in, in, in such a career. And just the interesting part that you take this passion and you got it and help people. So just the question maybe coming to my mind, how do, what are the biggest struggles that you can see from a people perspective when they come and ask your support in terms of career coaching? What is this biggest struggle? That's a great question. I think there is a, there is a few because you have different categories of people. There is a category of people that you know, in our generation, I would say, I hope it's going to change one day, but it's still the same case now. <laughs> we go to school mm -hmm. and unfortunately at school, sometimes they give us courses or, you know, classes that you will not use anymore after. And mm -hmm. that won't make a difference. Instead of teaching you, what is your purpose? What do you want to do? Something about work-life balance that would be much more useful for you. I hope that one day this will change, but it's not the case now. And I find that because you don't have that guidance, that direction, so many people, and I was in the same situation as well, right? So many people just maybe go somewhere because it's easy or because it's going to get, you know, it's going to be safe mm -hmm. or it's going to get them money, not necessarily because they like it or maybe because they think they might like the idea of it, but it's not what they liked. So the first category of people is for people that they don't know what they want to do. So even if they don't like where they are now, they have no idea what they want to do. But in that case, how, how do you help people? Because sometimes people, they are, you know, dri driven by, I would say, maybe money, maybe, yeah. maybe position, but they don't know what they love, what they like. How do you help them in that case? So, so I work on specific, you know, exercises that are designed for that. Mm -hmm. And it's not a magic pill. That's what I always say my client, mm -hmm. my clients. In the day. It's not like one day you're going to wake up and it's going to, you know, come on your, uh, you know, parachute <laughs> on top of, you know. It's not like that mm. because the most important thing about understanding what you want to do is first understanding yourself. Mm -hmm. If I don't understand not myself, not in a surface layer of how I know what I am and who I am, but at a deeper level of asking myself questions that are not comfortable sometimes, I'm never going to get the answer. And I'm probably always going to ask the answer. But if I don't want to respond to these questions that are uncomfortable, I won't be able to get to the answer and the result. It's only by going and, and really drilling deep down and removing all the bias from mm -hmm. culture, from society, from, uh, you know, from this doesn't make any money mm -hmm. instead of it makes money, but oh, I want, I'm saying anything. I want to be a musician, but it doesn't make money. But there is always ways to find to make money these days. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it's it's about, you know, the most important thing is also finding the motivation behind it. Because if I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing or why do I want to do 
before I want to decide what I want to do, I need to also understand what is the driving motivator that's getting me to do what I want to do. If I don't have that, I wouldn't be standing with you today. Because if I don't have that continuously, and you wouldn't be standing in front of me either, <laughs> because you are challenged, whether mm. it's at work, whether it's in a business, whether it's everywhere. If you don't have that continuously, you will let go at some point. But when you have that, you'll find a way to make it happen in terms of things. So I help you figure out both ways in terms of things. And this would be the first type of challenge of people I get. The second one is for people that are similar to where I was in the sense that they're in a job, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes that you don't necessarily hate because I didn't hate my, my, mm -hmm. my job in terms of things, right? But it's just that there's always like, you, you feel like, you know, I felt like there is always this feeling of emptiness. I mm -hmm. don't feel mm -hmm. complete. Fulfilled, yes. I don't feel, I feel like there is something missing. I can be happy about one project, whatever it is, but it's not enough to have that fire still burning. There is always something missing that I'm chasing after. And I'm like, what am I chasing after? I don't know. Until I figured out why I want to do what I want to do. And then I understood what am I chasing after mm. and stop chasing because then I, I turn into something else. So I help people understand when you, when you know what you want to do, which is a different case, but you don't know how to get it. I help you understand and figure out how to actually get it and how to actually brand yourself, sell yourself in mm -hmm. a way that is going to help you get there in terms of things. Because obviously we all know how busy the competition is, how busy the market is mm -hmm. in terms of things. And it's so important to know what makes you unique, what makes you different, and how do you actually make things different? So I would say these are the, the, the top two in terms of what you would find these days in terms of things. Gatti, thank you so much. I think that you opened a lot of you know, bulbs <laughs> in my mind in that way. And I think many people, they will get a lot of values from that. So if I want to land my dream job, yes, I know my dream job, actually. But if I want to land it, what are the steps that I should follow? If I want to uh, ask, if I want to ask for your help, what are those steps? I think first you need to also assess where your situation is at. Like, are you actually sure that you want that in terms of dream job? Did you try on your own and you didn't succeed? What part do you feel more challenged with? Is it is it, for example, that you know what you want, but you're not getting any responses? Is it that you're getting responses? but you're not getting the job offer. So you get to the interview, then you don't hear back. Different people have different challenges. That's why it's always important to do it on a case by case. I'm a person that says I don't believe in group coaching. I started mm -hmm. at the beginning doing group coaching. I stopped after two months. Why? Because group coaching doesn't help you. It's something I can find, you know, because it's not something that is personal for me. It's something that can be applicable for anyone. So it will not help me deliver results. But if I if I understand really the situation of the person, which is, which is what should be done and what is the exact challenge that you're facing and what is not making your strategy work, mm -hmm. this is how we fix things in terms of understanding, okay, this is where you're at, this is what you want. These are the gaps that we need to fill to be able to get you to that, to that result and that milestone together in terms of things. It's very important. It's the same as, imagine, people think it's different, but it's the same when people also... I would say recruit people, right? Mm -hmm. You don't hire someone because, I mean, of course, sometimes you have referrals, you have, you know, whatever it is, but putting that aside, even if you have a referral, you will still want to hire someone that you know is the right fit for the role, is personalized for the role. I don't want to hire someone that maybe has the skills, but I'm not sure what the delivery is going to be. But it's the same with you. You want to have something when you're buying a product, when you're buying something that is fit for you that is fit for what you want. If I tell you now, okay, this is the phone and this is another phone and they look the same, but this has this difference, this has this difference. Mm -hmm. You will get what is more suitable for you, mm -hmm. whether it's more expensive, less expensive is different. But the personalization aspect is everywhere today, everywhere. You want personalization because we feel like we want to be, to feel unique. And it's the same for companies. They also want to feel like they're special. Not that you selected them because there is no one else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean mm -hmm. in terms of things. <laughs> That's super important. Mm -hmm. And it's only by having that really mapped and then understanding what can work that you will get the result. Um, what is the best way just 
to get my dream job? Is it through networking? Is it through <laughs> LinkedIn? Because I, I, I believe that many people also have this in their mind. <laughs> Sometimes I need to get this job for this company, for this position and with this salary, but I don't know from where to start. How, how can I start in that case? I like that because everyone asked that <laughs> question. Well, actually, there is no one strategy. Mm -hmm. Why? Imagine you walk in the building mm -hmm. and you want to meet someone. You don't know where that person is, but you know there is 10 doors in front of you. How do I know which door I want to open? And then he's behind. It's the same. I don't know what door is going to open. So I need to knock on these 10 doors for one of them to open and the right person is behind. Maybe one door will not open. Maybe one door will open and will not have the right person. That means the right opportunity. So I will go for another one. Until I find the right person, the right door, the right opportunity for me. So I always tell my clients, it's not only I tailor my resume on the ATS or only I will go through networking or only I will, you know, uh, try to reach out to recruiters or only X. No, no, no. You cannot choose because you do not know what works. And if something works for someone else, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. And if you find a job today through networking and you're searching for a job in three years time, it doesn't mean that it's it also work. going to work through networking. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will work through recruiters or something else. And everyone says, you know, job search is a full time job. Unfortunately, it's the reality. You just need to spend so much time, you know, tailoring your resume, uh, searching for the job, preparing for the interview, doing that networking. But it is a full-time job. But the problem is how important it is it, is it for you. So what, what kind of channels that we can use it? Is it only LinkedIn? Is it only, can you share with us? LinkedIn, 100% mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But what I always say is as well, we're not in COVID anymore. There is also the outside world, which mm -hmm. people forget mm -hmm. because it's easier to be behind the screen mm -hmm. and to, you know, to, to hide yourself in terms of, mm -hmm. I don't see someone. So if I send that message to someone, if he doesn't respond back, it's okay because I have my screen. Mm -hmm. I don't get rejected. Mm -hmm. Worst case, he's not going to answer. If I get that rejection in real life, it hurts more. But I'll tell you what, that rejection in the real life is less likely to happen. <laughs> but you're more likely not to get that answer on digital. Because there is so many people that are messaging everyone and everywhere. So how do you actually stand out? And be careful. I'm not saying do not use LinkedIn because 100% you still need to do it. But don't put 100% effort on LinkedIn only. There is the outside world. You know, we're based in Dubai, but even everywhere else in the world, there are everywhere networking, physical events happening across. There are community groups of like-minded people. Go outside and meet them. Even if you are, I'm not an extrovert. You might mm. seem, look like I'm an extrovert, <laughs> but I'm not. I also get shy when I'm dropped, you know, in the middle of, 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 a, of a group of people and I have to speak. I don't feel comfortable the first few seconds. It's normal for everyone. But you need to push that comfort. You need to push that discomfort to be able to be there in terms of things because it's the only way. If I meet you physically, I mean, we met virtually, mm. but it's different. <laughs> we built our relationship. Mm. But imagine if I met you physically, mm. Like it, it just accelerates so much faster exactly. as well in terms of things. Yeah, because that this connection and I feel the energy, feel everything. Exactly. That level. Yes, yes. And the person can see that, can see that. So at least I know that, ah, I have a good first impression. Mm -hmm. And that's how important it is. Yeah, because sometimes um, when in the past I used to, you know, reach to re the recruiters, send them messages. Mm -hmm. And no sometimes, they, uh, <laughs> most I would say 99%, they don't respond. Yeah. But I actually need to ask myself and everyone also should ask this question. Put yourself in the shoes of the recruiter. Exactly. Okay? What is attractive in you? And at least what is in it for me? Is am I, am I, I am a recruiter right now. You approach me for what? And how, how you will stand out from this crowd? And what is in it for me as a recruiter for that level? 100%. So and don't don't be just annihilated or say no, um, as you said that I'm rejected. It doesn't. It will. It will never work. But you have to stand out. You have to think in a different way. The job search is all about standing out every step. Because if I even on the resume, even on LinkedIn, on interview, anything, if I if I'm on LinkedIn not standing out, mm -hmm. then how am I making a difference? And how as a career coach, there are so many career coaches out there, right? as a podcast speaker for you. There are so many podcast speakers out there, but it's what makes you unique, like you said, is going to make you stand out. What What is so different about me is not the product I'm selling. 
product of my selling is the bypass. Mm -hmm. It's who I am. It's be people, people either connect with you or they don't connect with you because they feel like you can bring them something, but also from a, from a, from a moral support. And then the product becomes, of course, your product needs to work because if people come <laughs> and then my product doesn't work, it's different. Mm -hmm. But it's a bypass. I buy a product because there is emotional connection to the product or not. Why do you buy Apple if you buy Apple? I, I have a Samsung phone, but anyway, if you, like most people buy Apple, why do you buy Apple? It's not for the phone. Look at all the phones that are coming out now. Do you think there is a difference between the phone? <laughs> like, there is no difference, mm -hmm. but you still see a queue of people wanting to buy the Apple. Why? 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 Emotional connection. I'm giving Apple as an example. Of mm -hmm. course, there are so many different brands out there and different things. It's the emotional connection you build. Why do I want that brand? I want it because it gives me that emotional support of X, Y, Z. Why do I buy into the service? Because the person that's selling the service is selling my dream in terms of things. It's, I, I, I have the vision that this person can help me achieve my dream. And this is why I buy into it. Kim, in 2023, what is the most needed skill for everyone to be recruited? From your point of view, and I know that you are coaching a lot of people. So what is this skill that it's needed right now in 2023? I'm hesitating between two. So I will mention two and I will say why in terms of things. I will say by order of priority. <laughs> okay. It's definitely not technical skills mm -hmm. because technical skills is, is something that is obviously needed. You're, you're, you're you know, being hired for a job, you need to do your job. Mm -hmm. But it's something that people know it's very easy to learn. I'm not gonna hire the person that has the best technical skills, no matter what job it is, even in supply chain. Mm -hmm. I will hire the person that I can feel will take my team much further away. That has the vision that I want to build for the team. What does that represent? That's leadership qualities. A lot of people that I worked with, that I know around from before, from you know jobs in terms of things, have positions of titles and stuff like that, right? There is a huge difference between two things, being a manager, and being a leader. Being a manager, I will micromanage you or I will just tell you this is the job, this is it, but I'm not growing my team. I'm not realizing what is the unique strength of each and every single people of my team. I'm not trying to mold you the way I want you to be molded. I'm realizing that you are your person and I need to mold you the way you need to be molded. And that makes the big difference between a manager and a leader. A leader is someone you wouldn't mind working overnight for because you know that this person will appreciate what you're doing in terms of things. And this person has your back. But more than that, because that's still okay to have in some managers, it's someone that gives you the vision of what they want to achieve and what you can achieve, not just what they want to achieve. Because the first part is easy. The second part is the difficult part. What? Do, well, how can you... What do you want to achieve as your vision, but will be part of my bigger vision? Mm -hmm. And that's the difficult part because you need to have a person that will lead understanding psychology, understanding people's mindset that they are different. Even if we're all in supply chain, we're not all the same people. Yes, most likely we're more analytical, but still we are different. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses. If I think that this person is the best in the team, I want everyone else to be like that, you're a manager, mm -hmm. you're not a leader. Because that means you want to mold someone to be how you want them to be. So you're not, a, you're not gonna get the best of your team because I need to understand that Ahmad is different than Kim. Mm -hmm. And maybe Ahmad is doing a better job at Kim now than Kim now, sorry. <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't mean I cannot bring Kim to the level of what Ahmad is. But what do I need to do? And what is her strength that will help her excel in her area of excellence in terms of things? And how do I keep pushing Ahmad to be in his level of excellence? It's not everyone is the same. And that's the huge difference between a manager and a leader. And why am I saying that's your skill number one? Because for you to excel in your career, because you don't want to be in the middle manager forever in terms of things, this is the difference. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that will help you get to a vice president to him. Not, I'm not even talking director role because directors can be managers in terms of things because you're doing the results. Are you a leader? 
Are you someone people aspire to look at and, and get motivated and inspired by and want to do something for you? Because you understand them. You have empathy. You have that. And that is so important. And it's definitely not as present as we think it is with people. I'm just wondered how can, like, if I have 20 years of experience in such 30 minutes of an interview, how can I show this passion to the interviewer so I can be the best fit for this position? What's, what's your team in your mind? <laughs> See, I'm like already talking. You're ready. Okay. <laughs> you need to find what is your story. Mm -hmm. I always say that, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to the movies, mm -hmm. What do you do before deciding if you want to watch the movie or not? Just read about the trailer, what, what's happening in no? the story itself. Trailer. Uh, yeah. What is the trailer? It's showing you the key moments. Mm -hmm. What is going to be the hook? What mm -hmm. is going to excite you? What is going to surprise you? Sometimes mm -hmm. even the trailer is the best thing of the movie, but still, <laughs> in terms of things. <laughs> I need you to think, what is your career trailer? What is your moment? What is your unique magical spark that makes it so unique? that will make me want to hire you because it's not about you. I am hiring you. You need to make it about me in a sense that this is what I have that is so unique about me that will help you achieve what you want. And this is what will make me want to hire you. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, to be honest, you know, it, it's not easy in fact because I believe that we are all human, yeah. but to sell yourself in such an interview and going <laughs> and, you know, you know, this anxiety when you when you're inside the interview and show this passion, I know it takes it takes long time. It takes effort to reach that position. A hundred percent. And that's the thing. But once you reach that position, no one will make you back down. Why? Mm -hmm. Because for me to sell myself, mm -hmm. I need to be confident in what I am selling. If I sell you something now and I'm not confident, you will see it straight away. And I will see it if you're in the interview the same. When I'm selling myself and my unique spark or whatever it is, I need to make sure I know that this is my unique spark and I know how to be able to show it if I'm being asked of it. And it comes with time. The first time, you're not going to feel the same confidence that you will have after 10 interviews saying the same thing and then personalizing it to why towards the person that is in front of you. That's how different it is. It is not easy. But this is what's the selling point. This is what will make the person make, like, sorry, this is what will make the person mm. want to hire you. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> On paper. <laughs> it makes sense. No, seriously, it makes sense. But I think it needs like a push. huge effort. And because people think that it will come one day in one day, it needs practice. It needs. It needs you need to you know effort. yourself. Yeah. If I don't know myself, and I don't know what is so unique about my path, I will not be able to find it. And mm -hmm. this is where we said we need to, to ask the uncomfortable questions. Mm -hmm. Part of my journey is not the successes I've had. Mm -hmm. It's the struggles I faced. It's all of the people that put me on, you know, PIP, that, that you know, told me that you're not good enough, where I said, you know what, you think I'm not good enough, I'll, I'll show you. Not in an arrogant way, mm. but in my way, because I'm like, who are Challenge, you to tell me yeah. that you're, I'm not good enough? Mm -hmm. No one should ever say to someone you're not good enough because you're not the person that should be telling someone you're not good enough. Who do you think you are telling me I'm not good enough? I keep saying this. Uh, this is one of the, the, the quotes from uh, Les Brown. He said that don't let people's opinions be in your reality. 100%. Mm. Don't let that, that, that shoe mm. come on top of your head because then it will... It will, you know, it, <laughs> I'm not doing the gestures. It, it will suffocate you to yes. the point where your confidence will shrink and shrink and shrink mm. and shrink. And then you will always wait for that person mm. or for someone else to tell you, you know what, you're mm. good enough. And then I will feel happy. And the moment I will tell you I'm not good enough, you will feel like, you know, because you're <laughs> depending on someone else. Exactly. You yes. need to be able to build that confidence back up yourself because that means that the moment it will happen, you will be stronger enough next time not to let it impact you the same way. I didn't say it will not impact you because we are human beings, but it doesn't impact you the same way and you will get back up so be much stronger. faster mm -hmm. than you know what it happens. It still happens to me today. You think I don't feel it? Everyone yeah. feels it. Yeah. But you get up, you get that back up so much faster because you know and you just look at whatever you've achieved so far and that you've already done it before. And that's what makes the difference. And that's what will make you understand what is my unique career story? How do I actually find that unique spark and how do I sell myself? It's not your successes. 
It's actually what, what you struggled with and how you overcame that struggle that will make you so unique in terms of things. So I think one of the biggest challenges in that right now I hear from my friends and colleagues around uh, me, a lot of people got laid off. Yes. Okay, and it's not necessarily for their performance, yeah. but it's because of the stress on the margins. Uh, the, the easiest way, based on the leadership, the, the quality of leadership, the easiest way to get it from the P&L is just to lay over many people or just to have a price increase from your portfolio. Um, the question that I want to ask you that for people that they have great experience and they have great performance and they have great uh, values inside them and suddenly they got laid off. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's one of the biggest struggles and maybe they, they, they will be in self-doubts. Uh, what is the best way to reshuffle this mindset quickly? Because I know that sometimes we'll be in this victim mood. How I can reshuffle this victim mood and try to find another job that fits me in that level? This is the thing where mindset is the most difficult thing to achieve because it's not the technical, technical, it's all in the mind, but it's about understanding and going back mm -hmm. to understanding what is making you feel that way, why you are feeling that way in the first place. What experience or what happened in that moment that made you feel that way? And to go back to reframing your limiting beliefs. When you reframe your limiting beliefs, then you unlock that power of thinking, why can't I, how can I, mm -hmm. not why, not what, why can't I achieve it or I can't achieve it because I don't have time or it's not a priority right now or I'll do it in a month. I'll start in two weeks. Everyone says that. Why not now? What is stopping you from achieving it now? If it's so important for you, what is really stopping you? Is it fear? Because most likely it's not exactly. the excuse. It's something that is under it. It's something you don't want to see. So your brain is sending you something that is not. Mm -hmm. But it's about understanding what is behind that fear. Is it because you think I'm not good enough? I'm afraid to fail? Some, and these are normal. Sometimes it comes like this because, again, um, I worked, let's say, for a company 20 years, yeah. uh, the best performance. And one day I got laid off. It will definitely, it will affect your self-esteem and self-confidence. And you will be in this victim mood. 100%. So but I also got a restructure. Mm -hmm. I don't say it in interviews. Mm -hmm. I also got a restructure in one of the companies I joined. Not because of my performance. Because they were restructuring and they re restructure very often mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of things. But I also took a hit. I also took it personally and say, why me? Mm -hmm. And then this I was exactly angry. Why? Mm -hmm. Why me? What did I do? I'm doing my job. I'm doing performing well, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And I got that hit. And you will get it, but then leave it for a week. Deal with your emotions, but don't don't stay and and you know don't stay stuck Sympathy. in your emotions because mm. then mm. what are you getting out of it? You you are still where you are, and you're going down further and further. But you're not even able to pick yourself back up to do something about it. The situation is not going to change. What's there? It's there. There is a restructure. Your job is gone, or you're laid off, for example. That's not going to change. They're not going to change their mind. So. Accept it. The first part is accepting. Dealing with the acceptance after the anger, after the frustration, after saying it's not fair, whatever it is, deal with the acceptance and then move on from it. What can I learn from it? Now what's next? What can I build next in terms of things? How can I find another job next in terms of things? That's what's important. Thank you so much, Kim. Today, uh, I believe that it's <laughs> overloaded of, with, with a lot of values. No, thank it you. It was really a pleasure hosting you today. Same. And I'm sure with your inspiration, with your passion, you will impact millions of people. Thank but, you so much. Thank you, Kim. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> thank you. Unleash is the bridge between my purpose and my mission. And my mission is... Unleashing the human greatness to its utmost potential.